multiple um, different and unique one. And I'm going to paste here the same locomotion script that will actually uh, integrate with the animator. And I'm copying the Yuma data to the werewolf. And for this one, uh, let's see here. We have the Yuma data, my render. This one is required to, we need to drag the actual mesh and skin of the mesh render from the Yuma werewolf. And uh, the locomotion, if you plan to change, you need to uh, also change both on animator and the animator animation controller. Okay. And now we have the animated bones and the temp bone data. So this is basically the list with all the bones that are actually being animated. So no adjust bones are usually found here. But those bones are necessary to actually animate the after. And the temp bone data contains all the bones available on this, uh, this rig. And uh, it also contains the necessary original values from this bone. So uh, I'm going to look here for process uh, bones. This is a script inside the DLL and I'm going to drag here. Because this script will actually fill the temp bond data automatically. So I need to drag here to the bond structure, the global bond. This is really important and essential. And we need to have a, bo a global bond. And the uh, Yuma data is the werewolf itself. So I'm going to uh, clean the, the list and run the script so that we can be sure that the list is filled with the new uh, data specifically from the werewolf and then I can actually remove this, this script. Uh, sadly the same can't be done for the animated bones because this uh, first of all you can notice it's related to the human human uh, male after because uh, those values were from the other prefab, but those need to be updated with the werewolf ones. This is really important, and sadly, uh, at least for now, they need to be done manually. So I'm not going to do this uh, for all of them here on the video, but this has to be done, and for now, there is no script to handle that. Of course, because we can't be sure which bonds you want to be uh, animation bonds and which ones are adjust bonds. So this, uh, at least for now, it's a manual work and it's actually what takes most of the time for the creation of the new race. Okay, so uh, let me just organize here. Uh, and I'm going to select back the mail unified. And now I'm going to copy the Capsule Collider and paste here on the Werewolf. Okay. And you can see that basically the, the final volume and height matches in both of them, so the Capsule Collider size won't be a problem. And the same for Rigid Body, I'm copying and pasting here on the Werewolf. And Last, the last one is the twist bombs uh, component. Actually, this is optional, as most of those components. The, only, the, the real necessary one is, of course, the Yuma data. But uh, I usually like to have the twist bombs rotating, and so I'm, I'm using this here. So, what I'm going to do now is to actually remove the human human male avatar and work on the last edges here on the twist bones. As you can see now we have the missing transform because it was related to the human one. Uh, so I'm going to set here the left forearm uh, twist, this one here. And the next one is the right forearm twist. 
actually let me find this yeah this one here and the uh, reference bonus are both hands so left hand and right hand okay done okay with those settings um, we have everything that we need uh, this variable was not necessary but the twist value you can adjust to define the amount of twist based on the hand rotation and the same way as we have the prefab for the human we are creating now the prefab for the werewolf here on the race folder so this is the prefab that will be instantiated each time that we create a werewolf author so okay now i'm going to um, create a um, race asset here i'm going to show here the as the same as we have the of the human male so i'm going to rename this one to uh, werewolf you will notice that later on i will change this to uh, werewolf male i think so keep an eye on the changes I'll do on the naming for this, uh, for the race itself. And I'm changing to humanite and setting the prefab, as you can see. And we also have the, just like here, you can see that we have the prefab from the mail and the typos. So we need to set the typos as well. So that's what we are going to do here. An important uh, thing, each time you create or update the typos, you will lose the reference, so you need to set up again. And the DNA converter, let me get this out. Uh, the, as you can see, the male author has both the human male uh, DNA converter and the tutorial DNA converter. Those converters are basically responsible for adjusting the shape of the after. And I'm duplicating them and uh, I'm going to include uh, here for now. So I will generate the, the folder for the DNA converter of the werewolf and use those copies uh, as a base for the, the werewolf. So let me rename this. Okay. Right. I need to do the same for the game object here. So this is actually just a prefab uh, with the, the script. It's nothing fancy. And I need to add just here so that it has the right script. As you can see, it's simply an empty game object with the script. Uh, nothing and really complex here. And you can see uh, on the bottom an error because of the difference on the naming of the script. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'll uh, just double click here on the script and uh, open mono develop so I can actually edit this, this script. So here I am. This will become the werewolf DNA converter behavior, behavior. okay. Uh, it needs to inert from DNA converter behavior, uh, so keep that way, and change the same uh, naming convention on the rest of the elements. So also here on the, the action, werewolf, and the function itself. Okay, here. So this is responsible for adjusting and changing the shapes of the after. And uh, you will notice I will get back to this later to adjust how the feet of the werewolf adapts based on the sliders values. But for now, uh, you should understand that this is responsible for the shape changes. Okay, so uh, you can see the error message is gone and uh, we are good to go. So after that, let's see, we now have the DNA converter. I'll 
include it here. Uh, so it's the it's not going to show here. Uh, we need to drag the the prefab itself. It won't work with the scripts, so that's why we need to create this prefab to carry on the the converter itself. Let me see. Now we have all of those values set for the race. I just close everything and keep everything uh, clean so we can look on the next step. So we are going to need a scene to test uh, the werewolf race. Uh, so this is the default scene, as you can see here. I will just generate again some of the avatars so you can see. And what I'm going to do is to actually duplicate the scene and carry it to the, the werewolf, werewolf folders. And I'm going to create a specific folder for this scene. Okay, done. And let me rename this one as well. Okay. So now I'm with this scene opening and I'm going to actually change those uh, libraries to use the werewolf uh, data. So here I'm including the werewolf race, you can see and you can find it here. So that's the one I'm going to drag here, the race. And of course the, the slots and overlays, I can actually remove those because those are uh, used by the male and female avatar. So there is no need for those overlays and those slots. Only of course if you want to use uh, those uh, male and uh, female avatars as well in the scene. It's not the case in this specific situation. And here in Yumacro, you can see that uh, it's visible on both the changes that we've done. So uh, let me just save here the project. This is always useful. And let me run so you can see the, the error that we are going to, to receive. So let me show you here. What we can find is the human female uh, race. So this happens because here on Yuma Crowd, it's been it's still been called by the random pool here. So we have two random sets for male and female avatar, as you can see here. And those are a way to simplify the way that Yuma Crowd work. So you can visually uh, create uh, random sets that generate randomly generate avatars. Uh, based on, on some visual data, uh, visual uh, uh, settings to, to define the data, the possible data that the after will receive. So I just duplicated the human uh, male set and I will create the werewolf one. So I need to correct the name here to werewolf. Uh, here, let me correct this. Later on, I will change this, I think, to werewolf uh, male. You'll need to keep an eye on this. So we have a lot of uh, possible slots on overlays. I will remove all of them and uh, adjust those to specifically the, the, the ones for the werewolf. Okay, so uh, for now, I'll keep it uh, empty. Just no, no extra data, no information here. I'll save it, save again, and get back here um, to Yuma Crowd and use the random uh, pool of the random set that I just created for the for the werewolf. We are only generating werewolves in this scene using this specific random set. And I'm also going to break the prefab instance. This is required because other side, if we generate the Unity package, it will get back to the original values. We are reaching the limit, time limit here. So until the next video.